Hello and welcome back to another edition of the Fordham Ram pregame warmup for Fordham football. I'm Kelly Bright alongside Andrew Galata today to talk about these, this upcoming football game, Fordham football versus Bucknell Bison at 1 p.m. We're back in the Jack home field game, 1, 1 p.m. And Andrew, we're looking for the first four game winning streak for this team since 2015. Yeah, the Chase Edmonds days, all the way back then, where, uh, you know, Fordham was running the ball over and out. He passing the ball over with Tim Demorat and these great wide receivers. But, yeah, it definitely should be a lot of fun. And, look, hopefully they can get their fourth straight win here. And we're both going to be there at the game. You're going to be in the press box. I'm going to be on the field. And it, it was good last weekend to see how many people showed up for this game in person for that homecoming win um, over Wagner. It was really exciting to see. So, Andrew, what do you think? Going to be another packed stadium for this game? I hope. I mean, that was something that was really cool. Even like in like when we were in the press box, me and Nick, like because we could hear the crowd might coming through. It's like, oh, this is loud. This sounds really good. So it's definitely great to hear fans back and hopefully get a good turnout. I think it was a pretty, pretty successful game uh, against Wagner. Lots to cheer about. So hopefully everyone's like, let's go back. Cheer for the Rams. Yeah, it, it's good to see our team playing well. And it's also yeah. good to just have normal sports again, you know. It, it's it's almost hard to forget that this team played in the spring a few yeah. months ago and had no fans at their game. So definitely better energy all around for the fans, for the students at Fordham and for these athletes and their coaches. So it, it's been really fun to watch. And we have another great, exciting game today. And Andrew, I want to, for, for anyone who's getting ready, to, getting hyped for this game, I want to give them a few facts, a few fun facts few numbers few stats to get them ready for this game and and so give me one thing that Fordham fans should know going into this game today yeah I think the biggest one is I think everyone talks about this offense you got to go into the offense and for me it's really uh, the receivers who have just been so so good Fordham right now four receivers in the top uh, receiving yards in the Patriot League so Tim Demore at spreading the ball across the board, whether it be to Keith Carter, who's second, then you go to Fotis Coco Sulis, Hamzi El Zayat, and then also MJ Wright. Demore is getting everybody involved. It's so fun to see that spread offense, and it's something that I think will definitely continue into this Bucknell game. No, oh, definitely. I, I think the offensive weapons that Fordham have I, the best in the Patriot League by far, yeah. and and that's that's evident in how many different names we see in the scoring the scorebook every week that. Demora can throw to. And speaking of Demora, I think I'm going to throw a stat out here because in the last game against Wagner, he eclipsed 7,000 total career passing yards, which I believe puts him at fourth all time. And he's third all time for Fordham in pass completion, sixth in all time completion percentage, and fourth currently in touchdown passes with 51. So it seems like every game uh, this young man is going in and breaking a new record. So It'll be really exciting to see what he does this game. He's also thrown two, four touchdown games this season, 1,649 passing yards so far with 15 touchdowns and just five interceptions. So I can't wait to see how those numbers continue to increase. I think we it's very possible, not in this game maybe, but within the next three or four games, he could pass Kevin Anderson uh, on the list for all time, for to become third in all-time passing yards. As, as well, he currently has 7,005. Kevin, Anders Kevin Anderson has 7,663. So this should be an exciting, exciting game for him as well as it's been all season. Yeah, I mean, Demora in this offense is something that, you know, it's, it's, it's so it's so fun to watch. And like I was even in the broadcast, we feel like this is a video game. This is like the recreation of uh, the, the new NCAA football game that's going to be coming out in a few years because the way they're just able to race up and down the field, it's something at Fordham you really haven't seen since uh, Chase Edmonds. And what I like about this offense, they're not only doing it um, just through the air. It's not not only just one way. They're balanced. They do it really well. And Trace Need's been so, so good, too, especially over the last two weeks. And that, that's the fact I wanted to go into with it uh, for him. He's got two touchdowns in back-to-back -back games. This is only, he's only played two games. So four touchdowns in his two games. It's something he's been so, so good early on. And it's something, if he can continue it this week, it, it's going to be fun to watch. Definitely. And it, with this Fordham run, this Fordham run uh, offense, they've also been impressive. I think a lot of times their passing game gets all the glory, but we saw a fifth year senior Zach, uh, Zach Davis go out early and it, and it hasn't really mattered to be honest, Trey Wilson and also Trey Sneed 
both stepping up in big ways for this Fordham offense. So uh, that being said with the offense, I want to, I want to throw a stat out for the defense. And for once, I'm not, I'm not including Ryan Greenhagen's name in that category, but instead yet another impressive Fordham linebacker. It seems like every year they have a new, new young talent coming emerging. And this time it's James Conway. He was named Patriot league rookie of the week for this, for the first time in his young career, 12 tackles last game and a forced fumble for him. Coach Conlon had only good things to say about him in the, in the post game press conference. And also in the media this week said he really has stepped up in a big way and he's a true freshman. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's a guy that he's almost like Ryan Greenhagen jr. When you'll just look at him and the way he plays and how he's played a middle linebacker last week. And he's just a guy that even as a freshman, extremely just knows what he's doing. Definitely intelligent, aware of the situations he's in. And he's a guy three-time Patriot League Rookie of the Week. And things like those are just so, so important as Fordham. I mean, you see Ryan Greenhagen, but it's not just him. That whole linebacking core is really good. And I think for Fordham and really defense in general, the big thing is is being getting pressure up front. And Fordham, especially, you're getting some production from freshmen, which is great to see. And Matt Jaworski has been so, so good. Two and a half sacks. He also has four tackles for loss. And then Javari Rice Wilson, who got in the second half, and he just starred against Wagner. He had two tackles for loss, a sack. So getting some freshmen involved, too, uh, in the defensive line. No, definitely. I, and it was good last week. We got to see a lot of freshmen. We got to see a lot of guys who don't play that often. So one one yeah. player I, w- I really want to shout out, and that's Sean Holland, who scored his first touchdown last week. It was a 45-yard QB rushing touchdown. And actually, after the game, the coach and the team nominated him to receive the game ball, which I think was really special. He's a senior, has spent most of his time actually as a as a, a field goal holder. Mm. Um, he can't. He is a backup quarterback, but he's stepped up to do whatever his team needs. He's really been really a good role player and just a model student and leader and teammate. All of his teammates and coaches have only had good things to say to him. So wanted to give him a shout out and congratulate him on that game ball. Uh, A lot of guys we might see again get some action in this game coming up. Bucknell not (laughs) definitely doesn't uh, on paper at least match up with Fordham very equally. But we're going to get into that game in a second. But first, I want to quickly show a video of the highlights from last week's game because there were a lot of them (laughs) in this win against in this win against Wagner. So let's roll that video now.
from there, we're going to move on to talk about this week's game because that's what you're all here to learn about. That's what you're all excited to watch. And this week's game against Bucknell, Andrew, I'm sure you've done a lot of prep for, for your yeah. role as color for this game. So I want to go to you first with this. Uh, Bucknell 0-1 in Patriot League play, Fordham 1-0. How, what are some matchups that we should be looking for uh, with this second Patriot League game for both teams? Yeah, I mean, these two teams, you know, just on opposite sides of the spectrum, it almost seems. I mean, you look at, we're talking about Demorat before and just his amazing performance, Fordham air raid offense. And you look at Bucknell, only 93 yards through, through the air per game, which is very, very low. And you just go, you can go through all those passing, passing stats. And that's really the one matchup. I want to see how Fordham's secondary does against this, this poor passing offense from Bucknell and how can they take advantage of it. Last week, Lafayette against Bucknell did a great job. They were swarming all over the field and you want to see something like that similar from Fordham. And this secondary likes to play a lot of press man. They like to play a lot of that, you know, physical type ball and, with Bucknell not being able to move the ball down the field through the air. It's something I definitely want to uh, look out for. Yeah, definitely. Like I mentioned, the numbers are not great when you, yeah. when you compare them, the Bison are averaging six points per game. The Rams are uh, averaging much more than that. Let's yeah. just be nice to them in this situation. Um, but you, I, I wanted to look at this Bison, this Bison team and see where their kind of positives are. And, I think their rushing game is probably best in this scenario. Coleman Bennett is their leading rusher with 106 yards, 26.5 per game on 43 carries. And the reason this is interesting to me, I'd say the one, I guess, dark side of a dark spot in this Fordham roster is that they have a lot of injuries on their DL, on their D line. They're dealing with a lot of big name injuries. I mean, you have Green Hagen as your linebacker out, but you also have Anthony Diodato out. Um, Elijah's out, Coste, Jonathan Coste's out. You have a lot of key players on that defensive front who are out. So, Andrew, what what is Fordham going to have to do to make up for these losses in their roster on that defensive front? Yeah, I mean, we've seen a lot of young guys step up, like Max Jaworski, who came in as a freshman as a linebacker, and he moved versatile right into play defensive end. That was huge. And also DeAndre Carter, who to me last week had one of his best games um, as a Fordham Ram because he was playing inside, outside, and being able to play, you know, like Diodato's position and also playing the end. He just does such a great job at being multiple and being able, being able to play multiple positions. And yeah, it's definitely going to be a point of emphasis this week against this uh, Bison running game. Coleman Bennett had a really good game against Fordham last spring. Uh, it's almost, mm-hmm. as you said, it's, you can almost not forget it, but, you know, he did have a good game against Fordham then. And he was a 2021 preseason all Patriot League type player. So, those are the guys right now haven't haven't looked so good and you can look at the stats I mean hasn't had the best fall only 2.4 yards of carry but he's a guy that you have to watch out for Jared Cooper their running backs are definitely they're going to try to lean on the run as much as possible because their passing game just you know when you look at it, it's just you know a young passer back there and Nick Septonfelter so being able to hit to try to lean on that running game then maybe if you have success there then you can open it up but that's I bet what Bucknell's offense is going to do and Fordham I mean they, they got to do what they've been doing over the last few games, stop the run, and then they can you know go ahead and stop the pass too. No, I, in terms of momentum, I think it, it definitely favors Fordham in this situation, but yeah. I want to take it back to the last time these two teams played. And in that game, it was a win for the Rams, 31-17. Tim DeMora threw for 335 yards and three touchdowns. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a similar scenario in this game. But I would like to point out something interesting about uh, these two teams, and that's this will be the 37th time that they meet, and they're actually tied at 18 <laughs> wins apiece. So this is for the tiebreaker. This is this is more than just a regular Patriot League game. This is for uh, all the marbles. Fordham has won the last eight, the longest streak in the series history. So not only are they looking for a four-game win streak for this season, they're also looking uh, for a nine-game win streak in terms of their series with Bucknell. So a little bit more is at stake here. I don't know if the players or the coaches know that. Maybe it's just uh, people like us, the media, who have way too much time in their hands and <laughs> looking dug a little too deep for those kinds of stats. But kind of interesting to, to have these two teams face off. And, and Andrew, anytime you have two Patriot League teams, uh, you know it's going to be – it's most likely going to be a good game, especially this is a Bucknell team that surprised a lot of people last year. They actually made it to the championship game. It was a shortened season, but – they surprised a lot of teams last year. 
No, yeah, they were a team last year. I mean, they're in the Patriot League uh, final. And that's something I think college football and anything could happen. Yeah, right now, uh, Bucknell's not looking too good. And especially their offense hasn't, you know, really hit their hit their stride yet. But I remember when Fordham a few weeks ago played Lafayette and their offensive line was playing really bad coming into that game. And they had a great game, 41 points, almost beat Fordham. So you don't know what's going to happen inside the Patriot League. And that's just like, I think the beauty of college football. I mean, as much as, you know, you can look at the stats, doesn't look so good, especially in the FCS. Some of these stats are inflated, like, or deflated, I guess would be the word, just because uh, Bucknell was playing a lot of, you know, upper talent, just like Fordham did. FBS teams like Nebraska, same thing uh, with Bucknell. They played Villanova, which is always a tough game. So uh, th- those stats could be a little, you know, deceiving. But again, yeah, like 18 and 18 going for the, uh, going for <laughs> over 500, which is, you know, so important. And uh, they also like, you know, in eight in a row, so they, they were 10 and 18 at one point then. So that's, that's exactly. the real comeback story you got to look at. <laughs> These are these are the facts. You this is yeah. why you come to the program warm up for information like this. Uh, but Andrew, I I want us each to give our picks for the game. But to be honest, it sounds like there's not even a point in doing that because I think maybe we're biased. But it sounds like we're hmm. both on Fordham side for this. So instead, I'm going to ask if you have any bold predictions for the game. And I'm going to give mine first. I actually was talking to wide receiver Dakeese Carter earlier this week about the game, and it was funny. I, I joked with him. I said so you know, you're kind of the star. You get your name out there a lot. You lead the team in receiving with 454 yards, but Botis, who's a year older, has more touchdowns. And he said, you know what, that's changing this week. So oh. I, he's, I think he manifested it. And I have a feeling that the Carter has more, I think he's going to have at least two touchdowns and he's going to pass his teammate Botis for the leading uh, touchdown rece- receiver in the Patriot league. That's my bold prediction. What about you? I mean, first of all, Takis Carter, he's just like the, the human highlight reel, the, the plays that he, he really makes. Is. It's just, he's he's an insane player to watch. And to watch him live, you're like, how did he make that catch? I mean, like every week he has one of those plays, which is just so crazy. But I wanted to talk about this defense because, I mean, you look at the stats and in the in, in the spring, rather, they were extremely good at taking the ball away, a ton of turnovers. They playing, even the Bucknell coach said they're playing a little more conservative, not as many turnovers, only four interceptions. They had eight interceptions in the spring and they played – half as many games in the spring and they have double the amount of interceptions. So I'm feeling that you're going to get a few takeaways in this game. I'm, I'm thinking multiple interceptions for them. Uh, We'll get to Nick Seftenfelter uh, and this Bucknell offense. And I'm I'm going to say multiple interceptions there, maybe even three like they had uh, in the game in the spring. Well, you know what, Andrew, I hope you're right in that situation. Uh, So that's going to do it for our game preview, but We've been talking a lot. We are part of the media. I'm sure you guys want to hear from someone who actually has an impact on the result of this game. So we're going to send it to the Ram Roundup with Coach Conlon right now. Week 7 edition of the Fordham Football Ram Roundup. Nick DeLuca joined by Fordham head coach Joe Conlon. Coach how happy were you to see your team go out and execute in your final non-conference game of the season? Yeah, I mean, anytime you can get the quarterback out at halftime in a positive way, it's just a great day. Uh, I thought the guys approach the game uh, 100% in the appropriate way, and, and we came out uh, playing really well in all three phases, so it was great to see. In a 56-7 to win over Wagner, you guys were firing on all cylinders in the first half. Tim Demore at the Patriot League Offensive Player of the Week with over 300 yards passing in that first half. You scored touchdowns on all six drives in the first half as well. What is the feeling for you like watching that transpire on the sideline? Relief, uh, to be honest, because you know Wagner's a good football team. They have some really talented uh, football players that we talked about last week. So I had some reservations going in, and obviously, the, you know, coming off an emotional win on the road against Lafayette in league. Um, you know, there were some red flags there that, you know, we could have maybe, uh, you know, that's what they call a trap game. But, you know, you're relieved that the guys come out and, and we have great senior leadership, so they, they attacked it and uh, we played some of our best football. That's all you're trying to do. Flipping to this week, you take on Bucknell, a finalist in the Patriot League Championship game a year ago. What do you expect from them? in terms of a challenge? Yeah, physical on defense, they play really hard. I think they have a good scheme. Uh, offensively, they do a nice job with RPO. Um, you know, the uh, quarterbacks, you know, they play multiple quarterbacks. Uh, some of them are very good athletes. They can run really well, so it should be an interesting test. 
This weekend, you guys have an opportunity to win a four straight game for the first time since 2015. What do you need to do to sustain this level of success? You know, take care of the football um, and just try to play a little bit better than we did the week before. Coach, appreciate the time. Week 7 edition of the Fordham Football Ram Roundup continues. Nick DeLuca joined by Fordham wide receiver Fotis Coco Sulis. Fotis, the offense clicking on all cylinders in the first half this week. You guys score touchdowns on all six of your first half possessions. How fun was it for you to be a part of the offense when things are going as well as they did last weekend? I mean, it's awesome. You know, we have great guys all around every position, so when we're all going, it's you know it's great to see. You, for sure. Last week against Lafayette, you have a catch for 12 yards. This week, nine catches, over 100 yards, and two touchdowns. What does it say about this offense to where any given week it can be your week and anybody is able to produce in a big way? Yeah, it just says that we have a lot of talented guys. So wherever the defense, whoever they think they're going to stop, they may stop him, but someone else is going to you know have a great day. So. It's awesome to, to see, for sure. Offensively, of course, you guys aren't going to score on every drive, but what do you need to do offensively to sustain the success that you guys have enjoyed over the last couple of weeks? I think we just need to come out fast, physical, and smart. You know, our coaches hit on it all the time. If we, if we do our, our job, if everybody does their job, you know, we'll come out successful. We just got to focus on us and compete against ourselves, and we'll be good. Fatisse, appreciate the time. Fordham back in action this weekend as they welcome Bucknell to the Bronx, looking for a four straight win for the first time since 2015. Kickoff slated for 1 p.m. on Saturday. All right, thank you so much for sticking with us through this pregame warm up this far. And if you've made it this far, guess what? It's almost over. So you can, it's, <laughs> You can finish it out. Come on. We, we got this. Game's coming soon. Game time very yeah. shortly. But, Andrew, I, I want to have some fun before we outro this uh, pregame warm-up. Last week was homecoming. A great time to remember how awesome it is to be a Fordham Ram, to be a part of this campus, and just to be a part of something special and, and an institution that has such a great legacy. So this week, I want to have a little bit of fun. I want to get away from football a little bit. And yeah. we're going to do our Fordham – favorites so i'm gonna add, i'm gonna give you a category about boredom and you're gonna give me your favorite thing of that category does that sound simple enough yeah game? perfect yeah yeah perfect all right starting off with i would say it's an easy one but it might be i don't know what is your favorite place to eat where is your favorite place to eat on boredom's campus and if you don't like any of those places maybe are on arthur ave i mean Arthur, I have is it's it's so hard. I mean, on campus, I don't know. It's it's almost hard. It's hard the other way. Like Arthur, yeah. I have you have so many great places, and uh, for me, Arthur, I have a zero. It's a no way. That's my absolute favorite. Ooh, um, good one. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, pizza for me um, is Full Moon. That's my favorite there. Uh, so th those are my two places on Arthur Ave. But I don't know Fordham. It's it, it's tough on campus. That's like I think the one thing everyone knows when they either like tour Fordham or end up going to Fordham. That's like the one thing. I mean. I live in O'Hare, so I have to go to uh, Urban Kitchen a lot. So maybe that it's it's it may be the best of the worst. I'll say that. Yeah, I have, I'd have to go with Urban Kitchen. It's funny. I, all I I'm a few years older than you, and so I I remember it when it was called the Grill. So I'm I'm just yeah. called the Grill. That's that's probably my favorite. But I I'm gonna echo the same sentiment as you and say that the real place to get food here is off campus and beyond the gates. And that's a tough one for me. Favorite pizza. Full moon, I have to agree with you, is the best. But quick, like, late night pizza, yeah, I'm well, going to Rams. I'm, yeah, I'm going to Rams every time. Yeah. Um, but good food, Roberto's is, has been a that's favorite good. of mine for a long time. Um, let's move on, though. I love talking <laughs> about food. I'm really, I can't wait to eat after this call. Maybe that's why I keep <laughs> talking about food. Um, but let's go. Favorite building to take class. Oh, well, that's, a, that's an interesting one. Um. I'm going to go with Gabelli, like a Hughes Hall, it would be called. That's, I mean, it's like new. You have like, it's like the cushion seats, which is always nice to have. You have like outlets in, in the desks. So like, th that's got to be my favorite. Just, I mean, it's probably just because it's the newest, I guess, but that'd be my favorite. See, I'm going to, I'm going to reverse Uno you and I'm going to go with cheating because it's the oldest. And okay. it's, to me, when I go in there, I feel like I'm like, it's very old and tradition. And when I go in there, I feel like I'm in a college campus. Like I, I think yeah. it just screams like, it screams Jesuit University. I mean, I, I, there's something I like about that. So I actually like taking classes in Keating. 
Um, all right, next, let's do a favorite Fordham sport team to watch that isn't football, because obviously this is a football show and it would be biased if you said football. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I mean, it's, it's tough. I mean, look, I mean, if our men's basketball team, I like watching them when they're playing other A-10s and A-10 opponents. I will say that. That's always fun to watch uh, when you have like a team like Dayton comes in, who's like a perennial uh, NCAA uh, tournament team. Um, also, uh, baseball is another one. I know it's not like a big one on campus. I'm just a big baseball fan. So it's, and also living in O'Hare, you're like 10 steps away from the field. So it's always yeah. the one where you could just check in for a few innings and then, then pop out there. Yeah, I'm very similar to you. I mean, I play softball, so I'm biased. I, yeah. being, I love being at my own games. Um, <laughs> but I also, Fordham women's basketball is really fun yeah. to watch. I remember no, yeah, they are. Really fun to watch. Guys soccer. Uh, my family actually, when they had that run in the final four against Duke, my, I'm from North Carolina, so my family actually went and watched them oh, down man. in North Carolina, which is really cool. So it's been really fun. My team loves following them. So I'm going to give them a shout out on this show. All right, let's 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 do one more question. Um, let's see, at Fordham, at Fordham. Favorite person to graduate from Fordham? Like, do you have a celebrity oh. or like some? Wow. Uh, hmm, favorite person. I mean, there's so many like broadcasters. Favorite, favorite, yeah, favorite Fordham like, alum. Yeah, uh, there's there's a lot. A, a lot of broadcasters that just, I mean, I got, you don't want to say like the Vince Scully because I think everyone would probably say <laughs> him. Uh, but I, I don't know. It's uh, That's an interesting one. Uh, but definitely there, there's so many like really especially for like fev and what, like broadcasting i think that would be the main one i mean denzel washington he's a really great actor maybe just go away i don't want to pick one fuv person single one out uh go like denzel he, he he so i mean resume speaks for itself denzel's denzel is definitely a classic for me i was gonna say mike breen and then you were like oh everyone's gonna pick the broadcasters but <laughs> uh, i got to interview him last year and that was really cool so i'm, I'm gonna go with mike breen um, but there's so many famous people from Fordham and, uh, you know, there's the Vince Lombardi, everything here is named yeah. after him. I'm like there, there's so many great people who came out of Fordham and a lot of great Fordham guys on this Ford, Fordham football team, which is who you're all here to watch and keep up with and you're excited for. So let's not hold you any longer. Let's go. Re- let's get ready to go and watch and support our Fordham Rams as they take on the Bucknell Bison at 1 p.m. at their home field at Jack Coffee in the Bronx. Go Rams. For, and for now, signing off, I'm Kelly Bright alongside Andrew Galata. This has been another edition of the pregame warm-up show.